A pivotal moment in world history. We're remembering the Tiananmen Square massacre, which took place 30 years ago this week. Here is one of those demonstrators, Shai Ling, in 1989 during one of the pivotal moments. Take a look there. Students are asking us what our next step is. I feel very sad. I want to tell them the next step is bloodshed. Only when the square is washed in blood will the people of the whole country wake up. But how can I say such words to my fellow students? I can't tell my fellow students that we should be prepared to use our lives and our blood to wake up the masses. All right, and Shai Ling is actually live with us now in Boston. Um, Shai, first, thanks so much for joining us. Your your story is fascinating. Um, ABC has been keeping up with you because 30 years ago today, um, Ted Koppel, 30 years ago, not today, Ted Koppel interviewed you after you successfully escaped to Hong Kong. And now, 30 years later, you remain as number four on the most wanted list in China. What do you think about that? Oh, I just remember those days. I remember three things. One was the powerful experience, um, the joy, solidarity we felt, the hope we had for country. The second thing is the great deep sadness we felt um, right after the massacre, the disbelief, the shock, the turning point of our lives and the lives of our country. Um, and the third point is um, after 30 years, uh, looking back uh, with great peace and confidence. Um, I saw how, you know, that night um, when the massacre took place, uh, we couldn't believe it. We thought the Blasha and Ming, they were just going to beat us up and drag us out of the square. Nobody anticipated a massacre, a brutal massacre. And uh, so right after that, you know, so many people believe the, uh, the government would collapse and, would, um, would, and the whole regime would just be over. And then... As the days prolonged, the, the martial law took place, uh, the massive manhunt took place, the most wanted uh, took place, and it was a, it was a, it was a white terror. People are free to speaking, uh, the spirit of freedom was crushed, and uh, so that went into a, you know, several years of darkness. Uh, it took me 10 months in hiding until I was able to try to finally got, uh, come out from the country. Um, my last journey was I was put into a cargo box inside a boat um, for basically five days and four nights. Wow. Um, looking wow. back, and it was amazing how we were able to survive, um, even though we were surrounded by police um, during that time, and they even came up to our boat. Uh, but we were protected by some superpower force. Um, there's an interesting story. There was a sailor had a... Uh, his peanuts were stolen by uh, by some uh, rats on the boat, and the rats were going to try to come into our cargo box. But somehow, last that second, they went to another one. So we heard a lot of noise. Um, so the rats were killed, but we were saved. Um, so we were. So I'm looking back. I felt there is this. There's a special force out there protecting us. Um, you know, leading us to where I need to be to freedom, and also how the Tiananmen movement had impact. You know, Eastern Europe former Soviet Union, the fall of the Berlin Wall, and uh, it was led to the whole domino fall of um, the communist camp uh, between 1989 to all the way to 1992. So I know, I look at recent coverage, so many media are just saying, oh, you know, another big forgetting, people don't remember, don't want to talk about it. Um, but I don't believe that's the truth. Um, I, looking back with great hope, I know people who ever experienced 1989 would never forget what we have experienced, what, what we have witnessed, uh, what we have gone through. Uh, many of us came to faith to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, to come to know God's great, um, powerful plan for China, that one day China will be set free and democracy will come and uh, the, uh, the victim's family will be comforted. Um, so we remain, I remain hopeful uh, and confident about the future. Yeah, it's it's so interesting to see the um, the images of you when you were younger there. Um, so you went from being a homeless refugee in the U.S. to former President Clinton um, granting you citizenship. Um, what would you say your life is like now? My life is um, it's good. Life is good. Um, and uh, it has challenges, a lot of challenges. Not easy to, you know, survive 
a massacre to overcome a lot of emotional loss. I lost my mother, my grandmother during that journey. You know, my mom passed away a month before I was told about it. So I had no chance to do anything. That regret, that pain, that sorrow when I was all alone by myself in America for the first four years. It was tough, it's challenging. And to, to live an American dream as a refugee, as immigrants, to re- learn the language all over, um, to rebuild a family, rebuild a life, um, you know, rebu- rebuild a career, it's not easy. Uh, but China has never left in my mind, all my heart, my soul, my prayers, my hope are still with China and my confidence still with the people there. Uh, I think about 10 years ago, uh, after I had a spiritual awakening, um, I was called to uh, found a ministry called All Girls Aloud. And that ministry focused on to end China's brutal for, um, one-child policy, which killed over 400 million babies. So this time, I was able to experience working with God, with faithful believers, and to through prayer, fasting, repentance, advocacy. Um, after you know, five, six years, and God was able to help us end brutal one-child policy. And so today in China, um, there's official two children policy. There are over one million babies are being born legitimately as a second child. And the talk is to um, potentially have a more, you know, a, a remove the entire uh, even um, children limitation policy. So I see hope. I see God can end this brutal one child policy. Um, therefore, it can also bring China to freedom. Wow, Shai, incredible story, incredible work. Um, we really appreciate you joining us today on uh, the anniversary of this, this uh, massacre. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your coverage. Um, your work is so important. And just on behalf of all the people in China and uh, here, we thank you for your great effort. Good job. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.